An entitled customer claims to know the owner while also demanding ridiculous things at my restaurant. But what they don't know is that I've been waiting for this day since the moment I opened this restaurant. So I decide to let loose and completely humiliate this guy in the process. Here's what happened. Three years ago, I realized and made true my dream of opening my own restaurant with my boyfriend. I managed to find a lovely location in Texas, as well as coming across a dedicated crew. And this is only after sifting through some misfits as well as some complete idiots. And this place has brought me endless joy and endless stress. But that isn't why I'm here. This morning, a server of mine told me to post my story. So let's get started. Last night, I had an interesting three top come in 15 minutes before the kitchen closed. But you know what? That's not an issue. It had been a slow day and my two cooks were fine with it. My bartender had already gone on his way and my closing server was already doing her side work and had three tables of her own already. So I stepped up and I took the table. I started my conversation conversation with them as we were walking over. Hi there, nice to meet you. Before we get too far along, I'm just going to let you know that the kitchen closes in about 15 minutes, so I would like to get your orders sorted pretty quickly. With that, I set their menus down and I grabbed their drink orders. Nothing too complex. Two Long Islands and a margarita. Luckily, when I returned, they were ready to order. A fact that I'm relieved to hear. They ordered two Rubens and a pork chop meal. Now, for the sake of the story, I'm going to be using three different names. One of the guys is going to be called Margarita, and the other two people are going to be called Long Island Brother and Long Island Sister. This way we can keep people anonymous and nobody gets in trouble. Now, Margarita seemed to be a standalone from his brother and sister, a fact that I learned from just a little bit of small talk. Margarita also had a few nitpicks and changes to his pork, which is no problem. It's just going to make his food a tiny bit longer to make. I asked them again if they want any appetizers, reminding them that the kitchen will be closing in about 10 minutes, but they assured me that they were fine. Their food takes a little bit over 10 minutes. When I get it all and I take it out, I tell my cooks to give it 10 minutes more just to make sure they like everything before they shut it down. Heading back out, I dole out everybody's food and I ask if everything looks alright. Long Island sister asks for a Diet Coke and hands over her half full Long Island, which I mark as a refill to save her a little bit of money. About 5 minutes go by and I check in. Long Island brother and Long Island sister love their food and no complaints can be found in the slightest. Margarita is silent but also doesn't have any complaints and the pork chop that he ordered is almost half done. I go back and I tell the kitchen to shut down and they do just that. But things escalate in a way that I seriously never expected and I still cannot believe the entitlement of these people in my restaurant. A little more time goes by and I get new drinks around and that's when Margarita drops it on me. Now about 15 minutes after the kitchen is closed and cleanup has begun. Margarita says can you get me some mozzarella sticks? I say to them well actually like I said we close the kitchen. The fryers are off and they are cooling so in Unfortunately, I can't. I'm so sorry to disappoint. Margarita then looks at me and says, just go turn them on. Get me some right now. Chop, chop. All right. So now I'm a little bit upset, but whatever. People are going to be jerks sometimes. This would be a good point to mention also, by the way, that I look incredibly young. I'm 31 and I still get carded. I look like I'm possibly 16 years old. It also doesn't help that I shave pretty much all the time. And that's because I don't look good with a beard on. I say to them, sir, I can't do that. The kitchen is already cleaning and I can't stop their work. Margarita then looks at me and says, Now listen here, son. I happen to be friends with the owner, so you might want to get me my food right away. Now when they said that, I grin. I grin incredibly wide. In the three years I had owned this place, I had waited for this moment. Having it used on me when I was just a server myself back in the day really upset me to no end. I look at them and I say, Oh really, you are? And at this point, I'm feigning shock and awe. I say to them, I'm certainly sorry, sir. I then watch as a smug look crosses his face. I then drop the bombshell. But sir, I'm the owner, and I don't remember meeting you ever before. Margarita suddenly flubbers and fumbles, flabbergasted that he has been caught in his lie. But being fully facetious and friendly to a fault, I turn the most flippantly false facade and begin to eagerly mock his former faux pas. I look at him and I say, tell me, old buddy. I then sit down beside him, setting my elbows on the table and looking at him. What's your name again? Oh, I do hate this forgetful mind of mine. Did we go to church? Are you an old co-worker? Maybe we went to high school together. After a long while of this, I decide that he is sufficiently shamed and I decide to stand up, putting on a more serious face. I look at them and I say, Now, shall I get your checks? Long Island sister and Long Island brother are snickering at Margarita, who shamefully nods. I return with their checks and head back to clean my mess at the bar. When I return, they left their payment in cash with a large tip and a note from Long Island sister and Long Island brother, saying that Margarita needed to be taken 
down quite a few pegs. And that was honestly so satisfying and I don't regret it in the slightest. That is honestly amazing that you did that. Seriously, I can't stand when I worked in restaurants how someone would seriously act like that and try and pretend like, oh, I know the owner. As if that's going to be some kind of like determining factor of how you're supposed to be treated. Like you're not going to get special treatment just because you know somebody. And anybody who perpetuates that, you're the one with the problem. You're the reason this happens in the first place. And that's not okay. So good for the original poster for not only putting this guy in their place, but also really embarrassing them in the process. Hopefully this will fix their attitude and in the future they won't try to pull this in another restaurant. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also follow Am I the Jerk on Instagram and Twitter to see all the stories that couldn't make it into the videos. Am I the Jerk for canceling vacation less than 24 hours in due to the behavior that my sons were exhibiting? Here's what happened. So to start things out, my husband and I have three kids. Two boys ages 8 and 9 years old and one girl who is 3 years old. The boys have been driving us crazy. They fight like cats and dogs. We've had countless talks with them about respecting each other, but it's all been to no avail. Now, I understand sibling rivalry, but it's gotten to the point it's disruptive to all of us every single day. I already told my husband last week I wasn't sure if the vacation we were going on was a good idea. My husband shut me down pretty much immediately, and things went ahead as planned. First of all, the three and a half hour car ride was predictably an absolute nightmare. The boys were fighting and riling each other up the entire time. My husband and I kept trying to reassure each other that things would be better once we got there and they would be too excited to cause any trouble. But boy, were we wrong. They had so many reminders of what not to do once we got to the rental house. So they did everything wrong from the get-go. Shoes on the white furniture? Check. Running in the house? Absolutely. I turned my back for two seconds and the eight-year-old threw a box of chalk in the pool just to keep his brother from getting it. We went out to lunch and they were out of control in the restaurant. My nine-year-old ran from us in a strange place because he didn't get his way. We finally go to the beach and they are frankly being brats, refusing sunscreen, fighting over toys, pushing their luck repeatedly, going farther and farther out into the water than we had originally told them. They were cursing as well. By the time we got back to the house, it was around dinner time and I was fed up. They were totally ruining it for everybody. Nothing had worked and I told my husband we needed to go home. And this is all for the reasons mentioned above, but also mainly because they need to see real consequences. My husband still insisted that it would get better, but I put my foot down and I told him that I didn't even want to be there at this point. So either I was leaving or we all were leaving. He got super upset and told me I was being ridiculous and this was unfair to our daughter. And you know what? I actually agreed with him, but I saw no other choice at this point. And of course, when I told the kids what was happening, they immediately burst into tears and they're begging me to stay, promising that they will behave. My own mother, who came with us on this trip, was also nearly in tears. She thinks her precious grandbabies could do no wrong. She argued with me too, begging me to just let it go, but I refused to budge. So we left, less than 24 hours into a four-day vacation. Half the ride home was spent with them sobbing, and my husband pretty much giving me the silent treatment the entire way. My mother decided to stay behind a little bit longer, but then started randomly texting me about 30 minutes in, asking if I was really being serious, while also telling me that the whole reason she came was to spend time with the kids. So I had now ruined it for everybody, while also claiming that they are only little once. So now here we are the following evening, and pretty much no one likes me right now except my three-year-old daughter. Are they right? Am I the jerk for taking away this vacation after the way my sons were acting? No, you are not the jerk in the slightest. Your sons are clearly out of control, and they seriously need a reality check. And this was seriously the perfect way to do it, in my opinion. They wouldn't listen to you or your husband. They wouldn't listen to anybody. They were breaking all the rules that you told them not to do, and it's almost like they were doing that on purpose. And to think that you would have to deal with that for, what, three more days? I don't think so. There's no way I'm going to put up with that. If I was in your shoes, I would have done the exact same thing. And it's not like you didn't give them some kind of chance to improve their behavior and try and straighten up the first time you asked them. But instead, they just kept taking this trip for granted, and they decided, no, we're not going to listen to you. They just kept fighting and acting like complete idiots all the time, and they literally ruined the vacation. So no, you are not the jerk here. It's also mind-blowing that your husband is acting the way he is. I mean, seriously, he is excusing all of their behavior, and he's just letting this happen without any kind of consequences. It kind of leads me to believe that he's the reason the kids act like this. He is clearly trying to excuse 
excuse this behavior as if destroying public property and damaging someone else's pool is somehow a good thing. He should have united in your effort to punish your kids for the way they've been acting because this seems like an ongoing issue that has been driving all of you absolutely nuts. So overall, no, you are not the jerk in this situation. Your two sons and your husband are absolutely being jerks with your mother taking a close second to try and guilt trip you and literally making it so you're the bad guy in this situation. But in my opinion, you made the right choice. Those kids need to be corrected. And you know what? If they're going to mess around like that, they're going to find out real quick that no, you can't act like a fool and expect that there won't be any consequences. My wife is constantly underfeeding me whenever we eat dinner. And anytime I have anything to say about it, she freaks out and starts to cry, claiming that she's an awful wife who doesn't know how to feed her husband. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. To start things out, my wife and I are both 32 years old. Since we got married and moved in together five months ago, my wife has simply not made nearly enough food for me. This is not a kind of situation where I'm constantly agitated at her for incompetence or anything like that. I would be more than happy to microwave a burrito. I would be more than happy to whip up a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but I can't do that. My wife has, for every single meal of our marriage, done the exact same thing. She will make a tiny dinner. I'm talking like a Chinese chicken salad with 30 grams of chicken and 10 leaves of lettuce, arranged fashionably with dressing. When I finish eating, I'm still hungry, because for a 230-pound man who works a physical labor job, it's simply not enough food. At first, I tried to openly communicate with her, but she always took it horribly. She would adopt a thousand-yard stare and then begin talking about how incompetent she is and how she can't even make her husband a proper dinner. I would try to calm her down and be like, honey, that's not the case. I just eat way too much. Or I would say, don't worry about it. I could just make a bit more. I would literally try to be overwhelmingly positive, but it never helped. She would always just get incredibly disappointed in herself. She would cry or she would take it out on me. Then she would make the exact same amount the following day. After the communication route failed, I tried to eat dinners as is. It became hard to sleep at night due to the hunger and I lost seven pounds in the first month. Eventually, I figured out my own system. On my way home from work, I started swinging by a fast food restaurant and getting myself a burger. I would basically pregame her meals with some more calories. I figured it was a win-win since what she doesn't know can't hurt her and I could have my fill of food. I would eat on my way home, walk in the door, pick at the salad and quinoa or some homemade mac and cheese that she made, compliment her on her delicious cooking and later dispose of the wrappers discreetly. Two days ago, I was on my way home and in line at the drive-thru. My mother-in-law was coming out of the restaurant. She ran over and greeted me. I asked her in a humorous way not to tell her daughter where she saw me because she'd take it really badly and she agreed. But then, as anyone could probably guess, she told on me anyways. I got home to a furious wife who was demanding details. When I provided the truth, she got extremely angry and looked legitimately hurt. Now, I'm not good at handling confrontation and I feel like I betrayed my wife in some way. Was I wrong here? What should I do? First and foremost, it is incredibly concerning that she becomes this horrible passive-aggressive person anytime you try to communicate about something so simple. Like seriously, is it that big of a deal that she's making such little food for both her and her husband? I know that if I was in that situation and I was the husband here, I would be first off very annoyed that I'm not getting enough food in my system, but also I would be really annoyed that my wife is acting the way she is. She is literally just trying to turn this on you and make it seem like it's your fault that she's not making enough food. I also don't think there's anything wrong with you eating food beforehand just to try and have enough to eat for yourself. It really seems like with the context we have, the original poster is a larger man. Not like overweight or anything like that, but it seems like they probably need a lot of food and a lot of calories just to try and make things work in their physical labor job. I don't think you're out of line for communicating with your wife, but I also don't blame you for going to a fast food restaurant just to try and get enough to eat. This is not okay the way your wife is treating you. She's intentionally just not giving you enough food, and it's almost like she's forcing you to lose weight, which by the way is really sketchy behavior, and that is a massive red flag. Like, you didn't want to lose seven pounds in one month. That's just crazy. And that's a lot of weight to drop pretty fast for the average normal human being. So from my vantage point, she is underfeeding you almost on purpose. And the way she's reacting to you being like, wait a second, I want to eat more food is incredibly passive aggressive and incredibly inappropriate. So no, you're not the jerk here. Your wife is being incredibly weird and she needs to figure her stuff out and stop treating you like you're some overweight person. When in reality, I'm willing to bet that you're just a normal guy. My office has made mandatory that we come into the office three days a week. And this is all off the heels of the pandemic where we were used to working from 
from home. And as a result, the company is now falling apart and most people are deciding to quit. Here's what happened. Just like most companies, my company was forced to go completely remote as the byproduct of the pandemic. It was an easy transition as we already worked predominantly online anyways, while still being in an office setting. We run meetings and collaborate with stakeholders countrywide. Needless to say, we thrive during the past three years with productivity at an all-time high and turnover rate at an all-time low. Colleagues were encouraged to take frequent breaks and not to worry about school runs or medical appointments, as long as it doesn't block work or result in projects not being finished. We started to win industry awards for this, and everyone was extremely satisfied. You were asked to go to the office for collaborative purposes only if it was needed, but they pretty much left you to decide. That is, until this smallish tech firm hired a new director who decided to enforce a mandatory three days in the office. Now, these past three years, we closed two of our four offices in the United Kingdom. Most people moved out of the cities and bought houses, sent their kids to school in a new town, and took on volunteering roles in their new communities. Second cars were sold, people took on more caring responsibilities as they work from home most days anyways. As you would expect, people were extremely angry over this, voicing their concerns quite loudly. I will preface this by saying that we did better working from home than they would like to admit to. There was no business reason to do this. This decision resulted in competitors moving in and taking away key players. People started to quit left and right. As things got quieter, people decided to maliciously comply. Our remaining offices got overwhelmed with traffic. People could not find a desk to work at, so meetings just got delayed. People refused to work over their contracted hours or take on extra responsibilities. Our productivity plummeted, and we had to result to hiring expensive consultants just to try and help us out. Internal satisfaction surveys were so bad that they refused to publish the results. This all happened in January. I just handed in my notice after 27 years, and I will be joining our competitor in two weeks. I thought I would retire from this place. Needless to say, an emergency meeting was called between the senior leadership, and they tried to fix things. But the damage is so bad that they had to hire an external company just to save them from bankruptcy. Honestly, when I really look at situations like this, this literally falls on management. This falls on the people at the top. They decided, oh, we want people to go back to the work office. We want them there three days a week no matter what. Well, guess what, Jimbo? You just ruined your business. People enjoy working from home. There's nothing wrong with it and people can get a lot of things done while also still having a life. I mean, what do they think was going to happen? Did they think that people would be okay with this? Like, it sounds like a lot of people moved across the country just to be in a place that they actually wanted to be. They were not bound down by a specific place they had to go to every day. They could literally work from home, get their work done, and then live their life. Why people who work in management positions in a company don't understand that people need to have their own lives sometimes and they don't want to work from the office all the time is honestly beyond me. So good for you for finding a new company to work for. Because if somebody's going to be this dumb to basically tank their business in this kind of way, then they absolutely deserve all the consequences. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.